accept the minutes as written from uh, our April meeting. Seconded, anybody? Seconded. Are there any comments, corrections, changes? All in favor? Yes, unanimous. Thank you. We do not have public comment. Therefore, we move on to the director's report. Uh, okay. So we had a, a probably all know. Did anybody come to the book sale yesterday? Or it's not yesterday, Saturday. Saturday. So apparently that was a raging success. They they raised um, seven hundred and forty two dollars. Oh. Oh. That was before uh, deducting expenses, but that was good. Did good business on all fronts for this thing that they were in, that they were selling, so they worked very happy with that. Um, I also want to mention that um, the Padley Samplers program that took place was it two Sundays ago? I'm not sure what the name was. Well, in cooperation with the historical, the historical society, society, they had 52 uh, attendees for that oh, good. Good good program, which was great for a Sunday. Um, so we got our, uh, our final total for Lidme came through, we, we got $13,006.71 for the year, uh, which it, as far as I know, that's the most that we've ever gotten. I'm not really sure why so much more, but that's uh, great. Uh, is I, that number in the report itself? Yes. Okay. It is. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and so speaking of with Meg, um, as we did in the, in the last fiscal year, uh, I'd like to request the authorization to, to do what we did in the same amount for substitute staff to, to have $1,500 up to $1,500 allocated for uh, substitute library staff. Um, today we've spent 100, or, sorry, $828 uh, what, of that $1,500 for that purpose. Um, we'll probably spend uh, a couple hundred dollars more before the end of the fiscal year. So I think $1,500 is a great number uh, and then I'm also going to request um, that the trustees consider increasing using Lake Bank funds for the year FY23 the assistant director's position from 32 to 37 and a half hours making that a five-day full-time sorry could, could we just pause for just one second my computer like the the PDF reader is spinning the wheel and I can't look at the report. The three, um, well, I need to be able to copy and I'll just, oh, if, if I can just take like a second here to. Did you mean to say for FY24 or FY23? Uh, uh, it says you know it's FY24, like in the. Yes, in the FY24. Sorry, I may have misspoken if I said that, but. Um... Yes, this is for the event coming here, starting July. I was pretty sure that's what you meant. Now, now my computer's happy. I opened it in Reader, and I'm good now. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're always good. <laughs> Uh, where was I? Where, um, where, where do you need me to pick up? The uh, assistant just a request on that. So position. I'm requesting yeah. that, that the trustees authorize $6,412.12 to increase the assistant director's hours from 32 to full time at 37.5, making it a 5 day full time position for the for FY24. And then at the end, when it comes to the budget cycle for FY25. We would make the proposal to make that a part of the rating. So, well, just can you just like give us the context? Last time you asked for something like this, it was um, the teen librarian, and the the reason you know at the time you know there was a the real reason of not you know wanting to have someone more you know have more hours, and that was one of the reasons that you know people have given for leaving the library because they didn't have enough hours, etc. So, like, just is this the same situation? So it's 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 a I mean it's a combination of both. It's a combination of um, something that's being driven, a conversation that's being driven by a staff member who has been looking for more hours for some time and trying to gradually satisfy that 
because we need it. If we didn't need it, we wouldn't ask for it. Um, but we're so busy that it would make sense for that position to be here. So we, you know, so, uh, you know, as it stands with the budget um, that we requested, that position is going from the shift ending at 3.30 in the afternoon, even though we're here until 5. She's not going to be here until 5. She'll be here the full day mm -hmm. um, for Tuesday and Thursday. She's here full day, Wednesday, Friday. So what we're hoping to do is to have her here for a good day, whether that's Monday or Saturday. I, don't. I personally prefer that she's here Saturday, but we're going to have to you know, bridge that, go across that bridge when we get to it. But I would like to see you know another experienced staff person here on Saturday because I think that's the day when we're sort of lightest on you know, experienced service people and Karen's experience mm -hmm. and what have you. But, you know, but rather than having like four of us here on Monday, it'd be better to have three three on Monday yeah. and three on Saturday. Um, so I'm gonna be this that's what I'm gonna be recommending and uh, trying to do. And this is this position has already benefited, so this doesn't make any changes to that. Is that correct? Yes, although there there will be some change to how the benefit. I mean, this will the benefits are prorated as it is because they're not full time, mm -hmm. so it will, there will be some cost, but that's not something that we budget for. It's you know, it's five hours of additional vacation time, or it's not it's not five hours. It's whatever the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not something that's going to like cause any issues. We don't have to like deal with the town, right? Like, are we, we have all, I mean, if, if that's a good, that is actually a big point. I probably need to go and talk to, um, to Joan about that because I think last time when we discussed this about the wide position, there mm -hmm. was, there was a cost associated with the benefits and we cover those. So, um, so maybe we can, Maybe we can table that until the next meeting. So oh, how about if I make a motion to authorize the expenditure in FY24 of up to $1,500 for substitute staff, $6,412.12 to cover five additional hours by the assistant director and if necessary, additional funds to cover the difference in the cost of benefits to be paid out of Lake Meg. Yeah, that, I think that should cover it. Okay. I mean, obviously you could go and they could have some objection to doing it, not because of money, but I don't, I don't really know the rules. I mean, in the, in so, the past, in the, in the previous instance, I think yeah, this was all, the expense was authorized by the trustees. It's, the funding is for the trustees to, to spend without, you know, any precondition as long as it's not very Oh, the link makes, yes. But if the benefits, if whatever the incremental amount is, is for whatever reason not accepted by town hall. We want you to be able to do this in any case. And yes, I, that is a legitimate use for Lake Bank funds. Yeah. I mean, I, I would presume that they would expect us to pay for that cost, but it's not going to be a question that they would say. You may, you know. Right. And you don't know what that cost right. is. It's going to be not a huge sum by any stretch of the imagination and given that it is an unknown and given that we have late med funds to cover yeah. that i would like this to move forward and be settled today sure. rather than great and just and for context as it says in the report the current balance that incorporates the most recent yeah that yeah. is ninety five thousand yeah. four hundred forty dollars so we just got 13,000. Yeah. Is there a second? I second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Let us know if there's any. I will, I will report back next month. Um, so 
the next issue, not an issue, but the, um, I just wanted to report back that the long planned installation of the, uh, the gardening bench, the potting bench outside of the children's department mm -hmm. finally happened with the, the hooker the school metal braces. Right. Um, that was installed and it looks really nice. I sent a picture of it to Alan and Dave Moskin because they both were involved in getting that done and they were both pleased that it's there and liked how it looked. So take a look at that at some point when you have a chance when they're over there. Uh, and yeah. Do we need to vote on the other part of the request, which is it was the fifteen hundred? She rolled uh, it. I, I rolled all of that was in the. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so in the meantime, I had requested a quote from Bear Street to add locks to the cabinets in the children's uh, story room because we had people, even though there are signs on the cabinets saying. You know, please don't write through our stuff. People were going through our stuff. Oh. And some bigger disasters, some, some big messes. Um, and so I requested Bayer Street to give us a quote for adding locks to those cabinets so that we could make sure they were secure and that nobody, you know, their children ate something they shouldn't eat. Um, and that is, that is going to be $875 uh, to add six locks and is, is this still we would cover this under the remaining you know balance from our I think that we can do that okay. yeah I think we can do that I move to uh, authorize the payment of eight hundred and seventy five dollars to their street mill work to be paid out of our balance from our construction project Said. Any further discussion? Paid from the balance of sorry or the construction construction versus. funds. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, uh, I did send around the quarterly statements from the Community Foundation. As far as the donor wall, I did not talk to Dan. I did talk to Dan the other day because a donor had a concern about their plan for their for their gift being overdue. I spoke to him to ask him to see if he could speed that up. Uh, he said that he would. He also said that he thought that the wall would be delivered on time, that we could accommodate the timeline for the for the reception. Okay. But I don't have like an actual way. Okay. So. Because I, I would like to pull the trigger. Um, I do have two quotes back on the from the two design companies. They're pretty close. The the one in Hadley is 141. So I was just gonna go with that. It's the lower of two. Um, but before I ordered them, I was going to make sure that you felt confident. I feel confident. Okay. If you if once you say we're doing this, then I'm going to okay. be Send him an invitation. <laughs> so I, I will do that. I will um, I will order them. We have some sort of addressers. Order them them. Is as an invitation. The invitations okay. um, to the event, which will be June 10th. Uh, we put down at a time of 5 p.m. I know Maureen is working on the the liquor license so then all the rest of the pieces will just have to to fall into place um so anyway we're, we're just what one piece that is not so that's all i have at our last meeting we reviewed the director's job description and vote or had a preliminary conversation and discussion and so we are now asked to vote on the, to accept the job description with the elements that were incorporated to reflect more accurately the director's duties 
is there any further discussion about that? And if not, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the revised job description. I will make a motion to approve the job description and if anyone has any further comments. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Related to that, um, I've mentioned before that I think it would be advantageous for the library and the director if we developed a process to review the director's performance. And I am happy to be part of that committee and if there is someone else who would like to join me in figuring out how to make that work, I would be delighted to have another pair of eyes, ears, thoughts. Not that everyone isn't welcome to provide feedback, but just in order to come up with a plan, because it's easier to react to a plan than it is to sit around the table and hashed all of that out. Is there anyone who would like to or has any interest? Okay, thanks, Susan. I also think you might want to put it out there again next. Yeah. Month, when we have some new members, because that is sort of a relatively low lift way for somebody to do something, you know, outside of just coming to the meetings. Versus like, you know, oh, I'm going to be the clerk, right? Then you're on the hook every month for a lot of stuff, so. I will be sure to ask them about that. Jess, do you want to talk about getting back to community feedback? Yeah, I don't have too much to discuss, just I think where we had started and left that project um, was um, the idea of having a small working group to develop um, to develop this um, certainly working with Patrick and maybe someone else also from the library staff um, but um, you know incorporating a survey but I think we also talked about hosting some listening sessions as well um, but similar to what you just described kind of working group that can develop a plan and bring it back to the uh, the trustees so um i think to call it a working group i, I might need someone to join me <laughs> well i would be happy to help but i would also say the same thing about, yeah like next month yeah just in case would it be useful to have a conversation, perhaps now, to inform the working group about the kind of information we are looking for and what the purpose is? I can, I can certainly say kind of what I remember us discussing as the purpose of this and uh, and I would be happy to be corrected or ideas added to it or sort of rethought. Um, my sense is that what was really driving this is the feeling of being kind of settled into the library at this point and, um, and knowing that there's possibilities for additional programming or services or kind of shifts in priorities. Um, that the new building kind of allows for and that the sort of change in usage post pandemic might suggest um, and that a place to understand community priorities. Um, like this, would be a, this would be a way to understand some community priorities, um, both for regular users and people who 
perhaps live in town but don't use the library. Um, I did put that in terms of like more the library can do. And so I, I also want to temper that to say what the library might do differently. Um, because I, I don't think we need, we need more, 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 but a sense of what is the community value and, and that can help shape priorities. So or it doesn't even, have to be additive, I guess. This would be. Well, no, <laughs> but if there were additional things that the library could do, it can certainly be helpful to have a list of those, perhaps in order of priority, so that as we are able, we might be able to respond. Yeah. So demonstrating a need for growth. Yeah. And I know we talked about like potentially, you know, requesting funding to be open for more hours in the future. So, you know, if that were something we were going to do, that could be an additional benefit of the survey. I mm -hmm. did look at the one you sent over, and they do mm -hmm. ask about hours there, but, you know, we could do something similar. If we were going to be open more hours, what, when will those hours be, that type of thing. Um, yeah, I think to Jessica's point, too, is asking, like, how can we readjust what we already have instead of adding right. more mm -hmm. hours, say, when are the lulls, you know, the low points of attendance versus the high mm -hmm. times of mm -hmm. attendance and adjusting accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I think that that would be useful information. When are you most likely to use a library? When do you think libraries are most helpful to be open to the public? Those kinds of and I, I do think that having staff involved in this conversation, even you know, from oh, sure. even just to to as this working group gets going, just to have a brainstorming session to say like what's important here, yeah. what are you, what are people saying to you over mm -hmm. the circulation desk? Maybe yeah. for the first time, I would say like starting literally this year, uh, I've had multiple people asking us when we're going to start providing hotspots which no one has ever asked for for mm. here, um, but now they are, which is kind of surprising, but we just haven't, we've never had people asking for them. Mm. We've had multiple people bringing it up because they're saying, oh, well, I've been getting them from the forbes, or I've been getting them from the Jones or whatever. Mm. Uh, and so those are the kinds of, kinds of things that you don't know until you, you know, just mm -hmm. sort of sit down with the, with the staff and say, like, what are you, you know, what's, what are people saying? Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. I mean, what do you hear? What? Do you see? Would it be helpful to have um, almost like a suggestion box, you know, for the public to say, you know, tell us what you think, what you want, you know, um, drop in a suggestion or an idea? Could maybe. I mean, I think it would be great to take that idea, but have it like set up so that it's specifically feeding the questions that we want answered. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think people, I, I I think having something like that could never hurt, but I think most people are not afraid to ask for things. They yeah. want to tell you exactly what they want. Uh, maybe not everybody, but, but as far as like being an indicator of you know community demand, like someone coming up and saying, when are you going to have hotspots, indicates to me that there's probably five more people that are thinking it. Uh -huh. Well, so, that's sort of my idea that, you know, there are, there are people who like the anonymity of yeah. just dropping something off, you know, Absolutely. they don't yeah. want to. So. Right. And I, but I think having yeah. a well-designed instrument, a survey, or something that, you know, that is, that allows for you to do that while also collecting the information that we specifically yep. are interested in knowing about. How do you like our hours? How do you like... Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. We don't know who you are where you right. live. Mm -hmm. right. I wonder... I think those... I'm sorry. Sorry. I just, I think a suggestion box and a survey serve different purposes that might overlap. Right. Um, I think having a suggestion box is in part just like a way for people to feel like they've got a place they can, like, oh, the library yeah. wants suggestions, but it's not going to give us data about how many people want things to stay the same or. Yeah. I mean, um, even at the bottom but of the survey, you would put yes, a suggestion mm -hmm. yeah. box. And sometimes the suggestion boxes can be helpful for things that wouldn't be captured in a survey, like, 
you know, hey, when I come in at 4 p.m., the bathroom is always messy yeah. or something like that that can then help Patrick make the case to the, the town to get, you know, get more cleaning, just the more immediate things. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think we're mutually exclusive. I was wondering if it would be more useful to administer the survey and then have either a physical suggestion box or something on the new website when it shows up to allow people to be able to continue to provide feedback. I would, I would hate for the suggestion box to in some way have somebody think, oh, I already told them what I think, so I don't want to tell them again. Because I think the, the survey, as you said, and as Allison pointed out, has can be more beneficial in helping us make a case you know, for changes in terms of staff members, yep. if there's going to be a change in hours, because that clearly would have an impact on them, um, or if it eventually has budgetary implications. I think it, it might also be interesting um, and helpful if we kind of, instead of like trying to come up with one, you know, because people get survey fatigue and they don't want to do something that's too long. But I mean, I don't know what for a community the size what a, what a good sample size would be. But having several surveys that are designed to cover specific topics, like how do you feel about programming? Right? And go into no one's questions. gonna do that if they they'll well they'll get confused they'll they will see another survey and they'll say I just did the library survey. Right, but they won't do it. But the next twenty people. Maybe they haven't seen the last one, you yeah. know. Maybe, but it's like, I think, like, from a survey, you know, professional, like, you use your opportunity, mm -hmm. make it as tight of a survey as you mm -hmm. can to get your information, and then supplement it with, like, focus groups. Yeah. In the, like, everyone will get confused when they were sending out, I don't remember which building committee survey. See, I can't even remember, but one of them, either the Russell School or something, a number of people responded and said, I just took this. And they hadn't. They'd taken a different survey from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission mm -hmm. that was like was asking uh, you know, similar. similar type of things. And it wasn't even like the same logo or anything, but even that, they got confused. I mean, the Russell School one had like a big picture of the Russell School on it. And still people said, I just took the survey. Why are you sending this to me again? So if we send out multiple library surveys, I just don't think that like, we, need to, we need to take our best shot. Mm -hmm. I okay. think one way to manage that is to have it set up so everybody doesn't necessarily see every question. So if you answer in one way, yes, I'm interested in programs, if it's your answer is no, then you go on to the next topic. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I think that goes some way to minimizing survey burnout. Yeah. People bit. are either going to take it or they're not going right. to take it. If it's too long, they're going to stop. But mm -hmm. the you know what I'm concerned about is just sending too many surveys. Nobody's going to pay attention. I mean, this this is real. So, yeah. I mean, I'm going to go confused. I already took it. Yeah, I think being as precise as we can about what we actually want to learn about at this point, keeping it as short as possible yeah. and skip logic and all that stuff, I think is important. I mean, just I did a quick skim of the East Hampton survey, and I don't know if when that one went out, if it was had skip logic, but I was like, I would I would have quit halfway through this. This is so long. <laughs> but it is long, right? I mean, but they're also making a case for a new library. Right. Yeah. Yes. So no, it's, it's had a very a different, different It's a different, yes. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I think being very specific about what it is we're looking for right now, like the information that we need for planning for the next, you know, we should decide, like two years, five years. Um, yeah. And uh, and not asking more than, than we need. Because um, then we just have more data that we don't know what to do with. People have made suggestions about things that we're not prepared to act on, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. yeah, right. Well, that's the point. Like, so for example... One of the things that they have is, are there parts of the collection you would like to see the library buy more of, right? So my <laughs> first question would be to Patrick and the staff, 
would you do anything differently based on the answer to that? Or is our building, our, you know, what we already know about the folks who are coming in, do you already have a good idea of what you would do? And do you already have a plan? Because if you are not going to change what you're doing in terms of ordering for the collection, let's not ask this question. Like, are you, are you honestly like struggling with what should we buy? I don't know. Should we invest here? Should we invest there? If that's a real question you have, I would ask that question. But if, if you're not, then I just wouldn't answer it. You know, I think one of the things I heard you just say is like, we need to like take an inventory of what we already know. Right. Like if you already know, like what parts of the collection need more development because you've got circulation records that tell you that, then we don't need to ask that in survey. So that'll be a, a key part, I think, that you and the staff can fill in is yeah. what 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 do we what do we already know that we don't need to try to know again? <laughs> Versus some things that are unknowable, mm -hmm. like the for the people who are not coming to the library, what are the barriers, right? You don't have any data on them because they're not coming. So that's, to me, a, a bigger opportunity mm -hmm. to say, hey, how can we really add something that would bring additional people in? Or if we have very specific questions like around hours, you know, which of these hours would you prefer to, you know? Because a lot of this stuff, like you guys, you guys have a lot of information that you collect yourself and because you guys have, you know, we have the benefit of most of the staff have been here for a long time. You guys know a lot about it. Who comes in when, when, you know, what programs people are coming to? Like, we already have a lot. We do, but I think there's something to be said for just for asking general questions about, like, how, you know, how would you rate, you know, the collection that you find? Do you find it useful? Do you yeah. find it relevant? Yeah, on a scale or, or what have you? Because I do think that there is a tendency also for people, uh, for the staff when they've been doing something for a long time to mm -hmm. make their own assumptions about yeah. mm -hmm. this is what mm -hmm. people want. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what they've always wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, again, unless they're here and otherwise, they may not you know, know what question to ask. They may be unfamiliar with something that someone wants because it's something that they're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question, and it, maybe I'm just getting into the weeds, but when I was going through this survey, I was like, you know, there's so much now that's invisible. Um, you know, are you getting it from Happy? Are you aren't? Are you not? Like, for example, if you order from Libby, mm -hmm. where does that come from? Like, would I say, like, would a person know where it comes from? Like, is it coming from Hadley? Is it just coming from CW Mars? So you're, you're talking, when you say Libby, you're talking about an electronic. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. That's, that's a, that's a, you know, when I say community investment, I mean, what the consortial investment made by a lot of the industry Yeah. Companies. They've, they come up with ways to sort of cater to the demands of individual, individual libraries or communities where they say, well, we don't find things that we want in this, so we want to be able to buy you know, these items and have uh, you know, a third treatment for our local patrons. And so that, that, is a, that is something that we have not today taken advantage of um, because, again, I haven't really heard a lot of specific complaints about what is on Libby or isn't. And I have people come in and say, I, I really wish that you had ordered you know, these things that aren't available. Um, so I'm not trying to create more more problems than I than I already have. So but Yeah, yes. and I'm not looking for trouble. I, what I'm yeah. I'm sort of getting at is there are like the boundaries are now kind of blurred. Sure. I, I asked that question because mm -hmm. I don't know. If I order a physical book, I can see is it here at Hadley? And if I put a hold on it. I know that someone here is going into our shelves uh -huh. and grabbing it for me. Uh huh. You think that, that that's what's going to happen, but that's not the way the system actually works. Oh. So that is a, that is a common misconception because really the way the system works is that the first library that has an available copy that runs that report is going to pull it from the shelf, even if it's not happening. Huh. There's no way for the patron at the patron level to, to request a specific item from a specific library. You request it at the title level, and then whoever is you know busy pulling hold, you know pulling mm -hmm. hold requests goes and pulls it from the shelf. And so we get a lot of people that come in and say, "I just placed this hold a half an hour ago. Is it here at the <laughs> desk?" And I'm like, "No, you know it, that's not the way it works." But it, it's still on the shelf. I'm gonna grab it for you. Um, 
But see, that's so, mm -hmm. like, how do I know then if I, like, even then, I didn't know. I assumed if it was Hadley, I would get it from Hadley. Otherwise, you know, it just arrives when it arrives. But I think a lot of people don't know, you know, t to this very particular thing, mm -hmm. what what's in the Hadley collection versus not. We, you know, does Hadley facilitate getting the book? Yeah, so I think we have to think about our, our questions a little bit, bit more maturely. Yeah, and the things the things that people, you might say, do you find the things, or are you, are you able to get the things that you want mm -hmm. through the Hadley Library? A lot of times, yes. if you're saying, I really want, you know, for instance, this week we've been getting a lot of people saying, I really want that Prince Harry book. Oh. And, mm -hmm. you know, so they're like, where's the Prince Harry book? Well, yeah. there are 450 holds on that. <laughs> Oh, you know, wow, really? On that title, and there are 200-something copies in the system. So, you know, it's going to be a little while. And Keeps uh, telling it, me it's it, available on Libby, and I keep scrolling past yeah. it. Don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to get it eventually, but yeah. the copy that you get is more than likely not going to be Hadley's copy, yeah. because that Hadley's copy is going to be going mm -hmm. to somebody in Worcester or somewhere, wherever, where it circulates. Mm -hmm. But the question really is, you know, by the arrangement that we have as being members of this Consortium, are you getting the service that you? Yeah, yes. That's really, really the question. Right. It yes. doesn't really matter that it's just, you know happily on the barcode. Right? That's right. You're getting what you need. Yeah. Exactly. So that is a, that would be a question to ask. Are you getting? Are you yes. satisfied with the service that we provide? Yeah. I think you know what. The former question tries to get around. Or address is when you walk in the library, and you are browsing or you are looking for reference materials on whatever the subject, do we generally have in the building what you want or something related to what you want, which, is, which directs our collection development rather than the broader, I want to read all the Daniel Silva novels in order we only have half of them that are the odd numbers. Can I get the even numbers? Yes. And I don't know if your statistics about ILL can tell you over you know some period of time how many people are using it. Or using the library level. Yeah. How many individuals as well as how many requests? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have that information. I mean, what it tells you, I don't know. I mean, there libraries are either net borrowers or net lenders. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I don't know where we stand. I mean, I know that we're a net borrower, but I'm a net lender, but larger libraries well, are net lenders as well as net borrowers. But, um, but again, what that what that tells you, I don't know because again, like you you know, in a community of five thousand, you know, what do you expect mm -hmm. that we only have so much collection space and we can't we can't possibly have it again? Oh, right. Else, but. No, no, I understand that, but I guess I'm wondering, is there a way to sort of browse quickly through either the categories or the call numbers of ILL requests and get some sense, you know, is there a big call on 746, which is Fulton? Are there a tremendous number of requests there? Are there asking for cookbooks? Are there biographies? Um, are there areas of fiction or specific authors? Does that in any way inform our collection development? What, what kind of difference would that make if we had that here versus having to obtain it through the consortium? I mean, the, in the end, somebody gets it, come hell or high water. But I think maybe that would be a way to look at are the assumptions currently being used to select items do those need to be tweaked based upon ILL information data I don't know. I mean it would at least be a quantitative look at things rather than just a subjective one or you know you have two people ask for 
something in one week, but does that mean no one else has asked for the same thing in the last two years? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of this is also is observational, and mm -hmm. staff handle a lot of materials. All of oh, us, all absolutely. Of us do. And you see what's coming across, and then, oh, I've seen this two or three times. What is this? And you know, oh, we don't have it. And look, there are a lot of holes. So a lot of it is just sort of mm -hmm. investigation and just awareness of like what's what what people are asking for. Like, again, like, it's everything. Like obviously, it's a huge bestseller. It's very popular. It's you know, it's all in the media, and so there's a lot yeah. of interest in that particular book and and subjects related to other books. So yeah. um, I mean, there's a lot of it is it, there's a there's a science to it, as you're saying, with you know, examining statistics and seeing Mars provides lots of great statistics. We can see you know all the things that are that are in demand, and then there's there's the art of it, which is knowing the oh absolutely and yeah. the sense of we uh, get a lot of compliments over over time, we always have about the kinds of things, the eclecticism of the things that we order for the library. And that is the happy byproduct of having a bunch of people here who all contribute to that ordering, who all have different perspectives. And it's not just any one person necessarily doing all the ordering and having like a very narrow sense of like, well, I just order, you know, whatever's in the New York Times best seller list, we do that. But we also will end up getting a lot of other things that people are happy that they found here, almost like a, you know, just serendipitously. It is like a treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I would like to hear from people, generally speaking, like, how do they think that we're doing? Are you satisfied with what you find when you come here? What are, I would like to hear what we're lacking, if we're lacking mm -hmm. anything. Um, I would just like to add very yeah. quickly that the fact that you have staff members who have been here a long time mm -hmm. and who know the patrons that also informs it. Absolutely, yeah. And that is where it's weight in gold, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know people, the staff here know people by name and what they want to read. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't really replace that without having someone here for five, 10 years. Yep. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, and maybe we'll ask again next month. And yeah, I'm wondering it's kind of what what kind of a timeline we want for this. Um, we're at the start of the summer. Do we want to like work on a plan for this during the summer in order to launch it in September? Do we want to do it during? Like, I know sometimes people want to hold off on doing something like this during the summer just because mm -hmm. people are not paying attention. Um, you know, or do we want a quicker turnaround and just see what we can do in I mean, these our, warm our, months? Our, our, you know, we're not we're not going to be developing the the next budget for I mean, what turn it at the end of December. So we have like mm -hmm. six months before we need to turn something in that that might benefit from that kind of feedback. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any reason to wait, but I think it would be good to just sort of like start with general you know brainstorming and talk about throw ideas out of what 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 would we like to know more about you know have that work period of talking about it because again staff are going to bring things that uh, the trustees will not bring mm -hmm. uh, oh absolutely what they see well i think to develop a draft timeline and to develop what are the methods that we want to use to get feedback you know, are there groups that we want to target? Are there ages? You know, would you want to have a specific get together with the friends? All members of the friends, not necessarily just the board. Um, or, you know, a group of, you know, the folks who show up for Luna's Friday morning thing with the little tiny people. Uh, I mean, I don't know if those are groups that we'd want to, but I'm trying to think of. And we probably don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So you say right. after you do your survey, yeah. then you say, oh, here's some, you know, high points, things we mm. need to circle okay. back on. Oh, who could be the best group to give us feedback on that? And that's when you start putting together okay. calls for focus groups. That's usually how it works. That's so if we were, 
So if we said, okay, we want to have recommendations in order to inform our budget process in December, we would want to have it all done by November. Mm -hmm. I'm just counting backwards. Mm -hmm. yep. So if you say, okay, well, we would have, you know, we want to try to have some focus groups in October, maybe early November, because then you start running into the holidays. People are not going to be thinking about coming to library focus groups, mm -hmm. right? So you want to make sure that you're, you know, if you're going to send it out in September, right, keep it open for three weeks, sort of, yep. you know, take a couple of weeks to at least look at it. So we can say, do we want to have focus groups? And then how do we feed this information back? So, I mean, that that's a rough timeline if people don't want to do the summer. That, yep. I mean, it's still doable. Yeah, Sounds very doable. And I think that gives us time, too, to be very careful about what we're putting out in the survey and get to talk with the staff. Right, so, this, to so figure this out the one we are. Survey development, yeah, not, yeah. yeah. Right. Which gives us plenty yeah. of time mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah. So, so it sounds like you and I and Patrick and anyone else who's going to be involved in the initial meeting, maybe we find a time sometime between now and our next meeting to. I don't know. I would wait for the new people. I know I keep saying that, yeah. but I want them to feel like they have the ability to contribute right away. I don't know. You are the newest new person. Like, does it, is it too much pressure to, to say, Hey, do you guys want to join us? Or is it nice to have a way to kind of jump in and immediately contribute? I think it helps to, to be part of a group effort because then you yeah. don't feel like you have to own it. Um, and then yeah, fail. Um, but that there's other people who already have experience mm -hmm. and know how to do these. And, and it gives you a chance to sit and listen and think about what are my strengths? What do I know? Mm -hmm. uh, what experiences have I had that I can contribute to doing this? So I'm looking at the comments. What? Yes. I'm, just, I'm just thinking if we got it started, if we just kind of had an initial meeting and then there were basically were kind of on ramps for people to join and along the way. What if post election I send something to the two new members and identify potential opportunities for their yeah. participation so they can think about it yeah, these a are little bit? Yeah. Right. If you have interest in this thing, please be in touch with Jess if you have interest in whatever. If you want to know more about either of these. Yeah, but I, I, that's a good yeah. compromise because even then if someone says, hey, yeah, I want to be part of the, uh, you know, survey committee or whatever, um, community outreach. And it, it, we could say, hey, we're scheduling a meeting for whatever, June 1st, can you come? And I think I would also say this is, this is not to say this is your only opportunity to join. If you want to hear more and yeah. decide you're interested, then you're welcome to. But I think that at least allows things to continue to move forward rather than wait from just meeting to meeting to meeting. Okay. I will be happy to do that. I don't have anything else. Does anyone else have items that we need to cover? Do we have a friend's report? I know what Lucy does. I'm about to ask you. A friend's report? Uh, I'm trying to remember what. Uh, it was probably planning for Saturday, mostly. It was mainly that um, Joy was at that point was not there. It was a lot. Of, it was some discussion about whether or not to go ahead with the scholarship this year. They hadn't made any plans, and then somebody said, "What about the scholarship?" <laughs> so then they uh, they kind of debated back and forth on whether to to go through with it or not to offer it. And I believe um, Joanne stepped in and 
got together and distributed it to the school, so I can believe that's on. But I don't know the details of all that actually kind of happened you know, between meetings. So, so they're meeting again next week. Next week. Um, and I'm trying to remember if they met in I'm trying to remember what the officer situation was. I can't remember if they voted on it. I don't know if they voted on officers. Yeah. Now that Jaren sat down, I don't really know. I'm not sure if Jaren's like that. Just, I don't know. So is the next meeting, uh, I'm just like thinking, well, if Maureen is no longer going to be a trustee after the election, right? When is the meeting? When is today? I'm sorry, I'm looking at my calendar here. So that would be the 16th. But their meeting is on the 16th. So I can plan to go to that meeting because this way I can also sort of remind them that they said, yes, I'd like to co-host this thing on the 10th and maybe I can right. get some more you volunteers. You were at that meeting. Propose that. That was that, was that the last meeting they had? So. Oh, okay. Well, then I was at the last meeting, but I didn't say the whole thing, so I missed the whole scholarship thing and everything. I just came, said, well, what you guys like? What happened to me? That happened like after the meeting, like just over email, somebody said okay. more about it. And it, is it always at 7? Yes. 7. Okay. I just put it on my calendar. So I, I I can go to that. I know we'll need another like regular liaison, but in the meantime, since we're doing this joint thing, it just makes sense. Try to go. I will mention that as also an opportunity to the new folks. Yeah. Sounds good. Shall I make a motion to adjourn the meeting for our second shortest meeting ever? Yeah. <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. 